Okay, guys, take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 3. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 16. Let's all stand together for the reading of God's Word. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound that it makes, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we've seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Many people call this passage Nick at night. Because Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. We don't know all the reasons why many believe that he did that because he didn't want the other religious leaders seeing him coming to Jesus. Others think that maybe he came at night because Jesus was always very busy during the day doing ministry. Could have been a combination of both or one or the other. But he came to Jesus at night to try to figure out who Jesus is and what he should do about Jesus. And many believe that later Nicodemus became born again, but we really don't know. Only God knows that for sure. But you know, the thing that he told Nicodemus as a religious leader, highly respected Jewish leader, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And then he made mention later that you don't receive the things that I speak about. And see, today, either you're going to be one that receives the things that God has for you today and go to heaven, or you're going to continue to reject the things that God has for you today and choose hell. That's not a good choice, guys. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And everybody that went down to hell, they wish they could come back and say to you, don't be stupid like me. Don't reject God and Jesus Christ like I did. You know, you can believe everything the Bible says. That's called mental assent. Nicodemus believed everything in the Bible. But see, he didn't understand it. He didn't take it to the heart and the soul, or else he would have recognized Jesus as being God in the flesh, the promised Messiah. So knowing everything in the Bible and believing everything in the Bible doesn't save you. That's mental assent. It's taking those facts of the Bible and letting them change your life by allowing the Spirit of God to come into your life. There are many churches out there. They call themselves Christian churches, but they have a different gospel. They believe you're saved by good works or good works help you be saved. They're rejecting the gospel of Jesus. And if you know the verse, say Ephesians 2, 8, 9 with me. By grace you are saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's a gift from God. Not by works, say that out loud. Not by works, say it louder. Not by works, so no man can boast. Let's do it, guys. There's one way to heaven. Put your finger up, everybody. Put your finger up. There's one way to heaven. Say it. There's one way to heaven. Through Jesus. 
who died on the cross for all my sins. Now, can I go to heaven by being a good little boy? No way, Jose. One way to heaven through Jesus, who died on that cross to pay the penalty for all our sins. And see, that's what those false churches reject by believing that good works have to get to heaven. Good works is not a requirement for heaven. It's evidence you're going there. It's Jesus living through you. He gets all the glory. But see, something else they say. They say that you don't, you don't need to be born again because it's just a journey. I had a guy come to me one time and say, Why do you Baptists always say, Born again, born again, gotta be born again? I said, We didn't invent it. We didn't come up with that. Why don't you read your Bible? That's my question. Because Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And so, see, Jesus came up with that phrase. You know, Jesus wants us to share that with everybody out there in the world. Have you been born again? Do you have complete peace and assurance and joy that you're going to heaven if you die today and that you would stay there? Because if you don't have that peace and joy and assurance you're going to heaven, you need to receive Jesus today into your heart. So you can leave here as a child of God and rejecting the devil and his ways. See, many people don't understand what born again means. Look what Jesus said again there in John 3.3. 3. He said, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again. What in the world does that mean? See, it means that you're totally a different person. When you're born, you're born who you are. And you watch a little child, a little baby, they're so innocent, so sweet, so precious. Angels of God. And then guess what? They learn to walk with that big old smile. You know, when they learn to walk, they just smile and laugh. So precious. If they died, they'd go to heaven. They haven't sinned. But then what's next? They learn how to talk. And what's the first word they learn? No! say that to God. Every day we say that to God when we sin. We scream no at it. And see, that child at some point comes to learn there's a God out there. And I need to seek that God. God puts it on their heart. That's what Romans means when, it, when Romans 1 says man is without excuse. Every man ever born in this world is without excuse. I don't care what religion they were born in or raised in. Or without religion at all. You see, God's spirit comes to every man and says, seek me and you'll find me. And either they seek God and they find God or they say, oh no, that's okay. I'm going to do my own thing. And they don't realize by doing their own thing, they're doing the devil's thing, see. So being born again means that you choose to let the spirit of God into your heart. To forgive you forever and take control of your life. And when his spirit comes in, you're totally changed. Those folk churches out there say, no, it's just a journey. Don't judge anyone. Everyone's on a journey. <laughs> Where did chapter verse on that? No, when you receive Jesus into your heart, you are born again. You're instantly changed. You're a totally new creation. Now, if that happened to you, raise your hand real high. Look around, guys. There you go. Totally changed instantly, born again. Totally new person, no longer the same. And how do you change? Well, there's evidence of it. Number one, you know you're going to heaven beyond a shadow of a doubt because you know Jesus paid the penalty in full for all your sins at the cross. You have no doubt about that. You praise him for that for all eternity. When you sin and the devil says, you weren't born again, look the way you talk, look at the way you're acting. You say, I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He came into my heart. He changed my life. There's plenty of evidence for that. So get thee behind me, Satan. The truth is the truth. So you know you're going to heaven. Number two, you have a relationship with Jesus. Every day you talk to him. And he talks back to your heart and your mind. And he leads you and he guides you. A brother came into my office this morning and said, you know what? I'm tempted to do something God does not want me to do. I said, let's pray right now. I counseled him a little bit, and we prayed, and he said, thank you, chaplain. 
God has helped me. See? That's what God does. He gets you right on the right path to follow the shepherd the way you should follow the shepherd so your life can be blessed. So you follow his ways because you have a relationship with him. John 17, 3. John 17, 3 says, eternal life, Jesus said this, eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus Christ. And so you know him in a relationship every day through prayer. That's evidence you've been born again. Also, another evidence is Jesus' spirit lives in you. He speaks through you. He ministers through you. And, and you couldn't do that on your own. I was born again and saved when I was a nine-year-old boy. And Jesus was the one that spoke through me to go to my classmates and say, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And I'd read John 3, 16 and explain it to them. I couldn't do that on my own as a nine-year-old. It was Jesus living through me. So Jesus speaks through you and ministers through you. You care about people's souls. That's evidence you're born again. Another evidence is you're no longer selfish, but you're Christish which means Christ-like. You begin to live for Jesus and show others who Jesus is by allowing Him to live through you, see. And Jesus is in control of your life. You have power over sin. You're a totally different person. The title of this message is The Truth About Salvation. In these verses, Jesus gives Nicodemus and everybody throughout history, since He said these words, the truth about salvation. Salvation. So write this down for number one. Jesus shared the truth about salvation. That those who are born again see the kingdom of God. That's number one. Jesus shared the truth about salvation. That those who are born again see the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said there in verse three. I say to you, unless one is born again, he can what? He cannot see the kingdom of God. So what's it mean to see the kingdom of God? See, when you're born again, God gives you his spiritual vision. It's like putting on spiritual glasses that you can finally see into the spiritual realm. You're able to see God working like we saw today when Kendu gave that wonderful ministry rap about Jesus that God gave him. So you can see God working. I was looking around and seeing guys being changed by God's Spirit. You're able to see that, see? You see God working. And not only do you see it, but just like we, we learn in many of the studies that we do, like experiencing God, you see where God's working and you get in on where God is working. Because you're born again, you've got the Spirit of God in you, and you want to get in on that. You don't want to miss out on that because you know what great joy that it gives you. And you, you, listen, every morning you pray, God, help me to watch and pray for opportunities that you can speak through me, that I can minister to somebody, meet a need, bless somebody. And God does that. See, God helps you to see. You watch and pray. You see where God wants you to go. There's somebody over there that looks depressed. There's somebody I need to go to and, and say, hey, can I pray for you? Can I counsel with you? See, you see, you see the kingdom of God. You see with God's kingdom perspective. You begin to understand things with your mind and your soul with God's kingdom perspective. This person's not picking on me. This person didn't go out to push my buttons. That's the devil and demons doing that to me. I will not let that take away my peace and my joy and my love. But with kingdom perspective, that's God saying to me, minister to this person. Pray for my enemy. Do good to that person so they can see Jesus and how much Jesus loves them. See, that's how you see the kingdom of God. The Amplified Version says it like this. Unless a person is born again from above, he cannot know, he cannot be acquainted with, he cannot experience the kingdom of God. One commentator said this. The very instant one receives the Spirit of God into their heart, they instantly receive the miracle of spiritual insight into the realm of the kingdom of God working on earth. You see, you want to always be in on what God 
is wanting you to do. God gives every one of his children at least one spiritual gift when they're saved so you can meet people's needs and get in on what God is doing. You receive spiritual wisdom and understanding you've never experienced before. Guys, this is called spiritual enlightenment that only comes from God himself. Because you're able to hear the teacher, the helper, speaking to your heart and to your mind. Write this down for number two. Jesus shared the truth about salvation. That those who are born again minister in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 13 again. Jesus said, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. See, when you, when you meditate on God's Word, you get a lot more out of it than when you just read right through it. And you know what? I never saw that until this week in my entire life. And I've read this passage hundreds of times in my life. But look what it says there in verse 13. Jesus says in verse 13, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Jesus was on earth in His flesh. But He says the Son of Man speaking about Himself, the Son of Man who is in heaven. So how can He be on earth and in heaven? Well, you know what? You're in heaven right now. You look around and say, man, I hope this isn't heaven. <laughs> Heaven's going to look a whole lot better than UGM, I guarantee you, when we get there. But guys, we're talking about heaven on earth. And right now you're experiencing heaven on earth. When somebody gets in your face and screams at you and cusses at you, when you give them God living through you, you're experiencing heaven on earth. And you lose no peace. You lose no joy. You, you lose no love, see, because you allow God to use you. So number two is, Jesus shared the truth about salvation. That those who were born again minister in the kingdom of God. They minister in the kingdom of God. Now, when you allow God to live through you and minister through you, and you get in on what God is doing, you allow yourself and everybody around you to experience heaven on earth. Because God is here. Most of the people in the world reject Jesus. That's why Jesus said the road to heaven is very narrow. Very few choose to go down it. But see, those who do choose Him, they experience heaven on earth, even in the midst of all the hell that's going on around them. If you served in the military, raise your hand. Let's give them a hand, guys. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord for you. Because of you, we are free today to live in America. And we want, we're not going to jail and being killed because we're worshiping Jesus. Okay? Thank you for your service. But every man that went to war who was born again, and all of that hell on earth that they were experiencing when they went to the battlefield, in their realm, they had heaven on earth. If they, if they were walking with Jesus' first love and with kingdom perspective, filled with the Spirit, letting God use them, they still had heaven on earth in the midst of hell on earth. And guys, that's a choice. My wife taught a seminar for women one time, and the title of it was Choose Joy. That's what it's all about, everything I've been talking about today. See, it's all how you look at it. It's all how you experience it. See, we're going to have tribulation and difficulties here in this world. Jesus said that. He promised. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, see. Because you see it with kingdom perspective. You experience heaven on earth. And you say, you know what? This horrible thing just happened to me so that God can work through me and bring great blessing to me and my family. And you just go on the UGM website and you hear all those testimonies about lives that were born again. All those hands that were raised, those are testimonies how Jesus has changed and blessed those lives. See? And Jesus wants to use you and speak through you to give you the opportunity and the blessing to be able to share with others, to minister to others, to bring heaven on earth to other people.
people see in the midst of the hell that is on earth. Look at verses 14 through 16. Jesus told Nicodemus, and see, Nicodemus knew this story about Moses and knew the word of God well. So, so Nicodemus knew all about the story about Moses lifting up the serpent in the desert. Y'all remember what happened? They were bitten by snakes. And Moses said, if you, if you look, just look at this snake on the stick. And you know what? Every time you see an ambulance, you see that snake on the stick. Because those people that use that as a symbol believed in the healing power of God. See? It's to remind you to have faith in the healing power of God working through those people in that ambulance and at the hospital. Just look at this snake on the stick and you'll be healed and you'll be saved. And why would everybody not do that? But those who were demon-possessed said, Oh, that's nonsense. I'm dying. That's ridiculous to think I can look at that snake on the stick and I'd be instantly healed. And you know what? Right after they said that and thought that in their mind, they just killed over and died and went to hell. See, the Jews were chosen by God to be used all over the world to reach people for Christ. Amen. And they still are. They're still the chosen people of God. But see, many, even though they're chosen, they say, no, no thank you, God. I don't want you in my life. I don't believe in Jesus. And therefore, even though they're chosen, they're not used. And those who reject Jesus, everybody of every race who rejects Jesus goes to hell. I didn't make it up. Jesus said it. Jesus calls it eternal punishment in hell, totally separated from God. That's why he calls us to reach out to them. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, I know you know this story about Moses lifting up the serpent. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. I want you to think about that. Just as those in the desert, all they had to do was look at that snake on the serpent. The serpent on the, the, serpent on the stick. All they had to do was look at that and be healed. And not only that, be saved by God, physically and spiritually. All you got to do is look at Jesus on the stick and be healed and be saved. And folks, he died to help us. By his blood, we are what? Healed spiritually and physically. We're here today. We're still alive today. Most of you here today had COVID. Raise your hand if you had COVID. I had it three times. And guys, we could have died. I, I had a lot of friends that died. It was their time to go. But see, because of Jesus, we're here today. He wasn't finished with us. So Jesus is the reason we were healed from any sickness or disease. And you're here today. If you've experienced a miracle of God healing you, raise your hand. Come on. There you go. Praise the Lord. That's God. If you're healed of a common cold or sniffles, that's God. And if you're healed by a miracle, and I've seen the dead raised back to life, of course that's God. So allow the Lord to help you and you believe for the impossible. And you know what? You'll see somebody who is incredible, and I've seen them, I've known them, so dark, so evil, so sinful, you don't think that person could ever be saved. And they look at the Savior on the stick on the cross and they believe and they're born again. They're totally changed. They're instantly healed. And see, that's why many believe Nicodemus became born again later. That he would believe in that. That he would trust in Jesus saving him. And he was born again if he trusted in the Lord. So, let's keep reading here. Look at verse 15. John 3, 15. The whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you know it, say John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him 
should not perish or shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See? Now, again, I want to remind you that's not just mental assent, just believing the fact, but it's allowing the Savior on the stick, the Savior on the cross, not only to forgive you forever, but also to take control of your life and be Lord and God forever. Jesus will never become your Savior unless you submit to Him as your Lord, your God, your Master, your Shepherd. How do I know that? Mark 1.15. Read the Word of God. Know it well. Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The good news of Jesus. And what is the good news of Jesus? Here's the things you must believe. This is the gospel that you must believe to be saved. The thief on the cross believed this, and he was saved. Anybody who's ever been born again believed that they were saved. How, how, how did they ever know these things? Either the Spirit of God told them or somebody, some Christian told them. Some born-again child of God told them the gospel, and that's what God commands us to do. First of all, you must believe Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for all your sins, past, present, future. And allow that belief to change you and help you know that you now can have a relationship with God and be reconciled with God forever. Number two, you got to believe Jesus is God and the only way to heaven. Jesus said in John 8, 24, to the unbelieving Jews, unless you believe that I am the great I am, you will die in your sins. So you must believe Jesus is God Almighty and the only way to heaven. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, when you reject me, you reject the Father who sent me. You also must believe that Jesus is your God and your Savior, meaning you must repent and say, Jesus, take control of my life. Jesus, save my soul forever. And that's what he said he would do in Romans 10, 13. He said, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Old Testament and New. So look to Jesus on the cross and say, I believe. I believe you died on that cross for all my sins, Jesus. And Lord, take control of my life, and he will do that. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Martin Luther, Catholic priest, stumbled across Romans 1.17. The righteous shall live by faith. And he realized God spoke to his heart and his mind and said, Martin Luther, you can't be saved by the good works of the church. You were only saved through faith in Jesus. By looking to the Savior on the stick and believing that death is for you, you will be saved. No good works. And asking him to take control of your life. Come into your heart. Save your soul. Take control. And he said in his heart and mind. Jesus I believe. I'm saved by faith alone. Thank you for this saving faith you gave me. Jesus save my soul. Take control of my life. And Martin Luther was born again. He went out and started the Protestant movement. And told everybody in the world that he could. That you were saved by faith alone and not by good works. Chuck Swindoll says it this way. Christ himself is the door. The door will not open by human effort nor strength. The door will swing open on the well-oiled hinges only by Christ's righteousness. And that door is opened only by faith. So I ask you this morning. Are you ready to let Jesus begin to bless your life? Are you ready to allow Jesus to begin to lead your life and use you as a strong man of God to teach others the ways of God, to share his gospel, to say to others, follow me as I follow Jesus. Paul was able to say, the Apostle Paul, whatever I say, say it. Whatever I do, do it. 
follow me as I follow Christ Jesus. We're going to all be able to grow to where we can say that to folks. And see, that's when you have the power of Christ. And Jesus always gets all the glory. So right now, and Christians, you pray. If you're born again, you pray right now for the guys in here that are lost. Because, guys, this is, this is an appointed time right now. This is a holy moment. They may never get this chance again. So, guys, close your eyes right now and pray for those guys, Christians. And if you need Jesus into your heart, if you need Jesus to save your soul right now, trust Him to do that. Look at Jesus on the cross like they looked at that serpent on the stick and they were healed. Look to Jesus on the cross and say, I believe. Just say it out loud or you can say it silently, but mean what you say. Say, I believe. Lord Jesus, that you died on that cross to pay the penalty for all my sins. Save my soul. Take control of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for making me your child forever. I'll praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, raise your hand real high. Amen. Come on, guys. I want to hear you like a cowboy with the Super Bowl. This is greater. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.